So here's an example for a simple harmonic motion. We have many tall buildings have mass dampers, which are anti-sway devices to prevent them from oscillating in a wind. The device might be a block oscillating at the end of a spring on a lubricated track. If the building sways, say eastward, the block also moves eastward, but it's delayed enough so that when it finally moves, the building is then moving back westward. Thus, the motion of the oscillator is out of step with the motion of the building. This is actually a true thing. And they have them um, for vertical oscillators as well for earthquakes and things like that. So mass dampers, um, if you want to look those up, it's kind of interesting stuff. Um, so we have, suppose a block of mass M is equal to uh, 2.72 times 10 to the fifth kilograms and is designed to oscillate at a frequency F of 10 hertz um, with an amplitude X sub M of 20 centimeters, which of course is 0.2 meters. Um, we want to know A, what's the total mechanical energy E of the system, and B, what's the block speed as it passes through the equilibrium point. So part A, um, when we want to know what is the total mechanical energy E of the system, we know that total mechanical energy um, we can set that equal to either the maximum potential energy, which happens at the map, uh, the amplitudes, or maximum kinetic energy, which happens in the very middle. Now, we don't know anything about the speed, so we can't do maximum kinetic energy, but we can set it equal to maximum potential energy, which is equal to one half kx maximum squared. And the reason we use this one is because we know the amplitude position. We know that it's 0.2 meters. So all we have to find is k before we can find the total mechanical energy of the system. Now k we can relate to frequency because we know that angular frequency is equal to the square root of k over m. Now angular frequency is also equal to 2 pi divided by period or 2 pi times frequency. So what we can do here is we can set this equal to this because we know that those are both equal to angular frequency and then we can solve for our spring constant k. So we get 2 pi times the frequency is equal to the square root of k over m. Um, so we get we can just plug in our numbers here, or we can um, start solving for k. Let's solve, solve algebraically for k first. So we get 4 pi squared frequency squared equals k over m. So therefore, k is equal to 4 pi squared frequency squared times m. So plugging in our numbers here, our spring constant k is equal to 4 times pi squared times frequency, which was 10 hertz. Where was that? Yeah, 10 hertz um, squared times m, which was 2.72 times 10 to the fifth. So for spring constant k, we get 4 times pi squared times 10 squared, which is 100 times 2.72 times 10 to the fifth. And so we end up getting about 1.074 times 10 to the ninth newtons per meter. So that's our spring constant K. And then of course the whole purpose of uh, letter A is to find the total energy, which is going to be one half times K X max squared. So total energy of the system, is going to be equal to 1 half times our k, 1.074 times 10 to the ninth newtons per meter, times x maximum, which was 20 centimeters or 0.2 meters squared. So we end up getting for energy about 2.15 times 10 to the seventh joules. So there's our answer for A. And then for B, we want to know what is the block speed as it passes through the equilibrium point. Now we know at the equilibrium point, all of that energy is now in kinetic energy. So we can set our total energy equal to our kinetic energy to find our maximum velocity now. 
So we get um, energy is equal to kinetic energy, which is one half mass times velocity squared. Um, so here they're asking for just the speed as it passes through the equilibrium point. They can also ask you, what's the maximum velocity of the block? Now here it is at the equilibrium point, so it's the same thing, right? So here, um, solving for velocity, we get velocity is equal to two times the total energy, which we just found, divided by mass square root of all that. So velocity is equal to the square root of 2 times 2.15 times 10 to the seventh joules divided by the mass point. No, that wasn't the mass. Um, the mass was 2.72 times 10 to the fifth kilograms. So for velocity, we end up getting 12.6 meters per second for our velocity at the equilibrium position.